Good morning. It is Monday, March 25th, and this is Michigan Mornings from Ave Maria Radio and the Ave Maria Radio app. I'm Matthew Handley. Coming up, I've got a sermon from St. Augustine on glorifying in the cross of Christ. But first, the local weather and this news. The Michigan Department of Corrections says Ethan Crumbly, the Oxford High School shooter, was taken to the hospital for evaluation after he was in a fight with another inmate last week. Officials say the 17-year-old got into an altercation with another 17-year-old, which caused this thumb correctional facility to go into lockdown in that unit. Officials say no weapons were involved in the fight and staff was able to break up the altercation quickly. MDOC says they are investigating the incident. Meantime, parents of Oxford High School students expressed their frustration with the school district at a school board meeting last week. It comes after the Oakland County Prosecutor's Office released agreements called proffer letters with former Dean of Students Nick Ejack and high school counselor Sean Hopkins. On January 5th, 2022, just 36 days from the tragedy, Ejack and Hopkins were signing proffer letters with the Oakland County Prosecutor. And while it did not officially promise anything, the action speaks volumes. That was Oxford parent Danielle Krozak. Those letters made clear that the two would get credit for cooperating and being truthful if they would be charged. And were, they were not immunity agreements. Parents say they are tired of the district not being transparent in the November 2021 shooting. Rashad Trice, the man who kidnapped and killed two-year-old Winter Cole Smith last year, has pleaded guilty in federal court in Grand Rapids. Winter was taken from her home in Lansing last July and found strangled in an alley between Olympia Street and Edgewood Avenue in Detroit. Prosecutors in October said they will not pursue the death penalty. Trice is also facing homicide charges in state court. In sports, both Oakland University and Michigan State were knocked out of the NCAA men's basketball tournament. Here's MSU coach Tom Izzo following the Spartans' 85-69 loss to the University of North Carolina Tar Heels. I feel bad. We played so well the first 12 minutes, and and then, I don't know, the ball just stuck. We didn't uh, move it as well and give them credit. I mean, we played a good team. Oakland Cinderella hopes were dashed after a 79-73 overtime loss to North Carolina State University. I don't think he can play harder than we play. I really don't. There were more floor burns, more dives on the floor, more. I don't think, you know, I think we played pretty smart too. That's Grizzlies coach Greg Camp. As for the women's college basketball tournament, Michigan State fell to the University of North Carolina in round one on Friday. That score was 59-56, to and the University of Michigan fell to Kansas in overtime on Saturday, also in round one. Final score was 81-72. to This is Michigan Mornings. Now this. It's going to be a little bit breezy today in the Motor City. We could have wind gusts up to 22 miles per hour. We'll have partly cloudy skies and highs near 58. Tonight, the wind gusts continue with mostly cloudy skies and lows around 46. Tomorrow, expect rain in your morning commute and into the early afternoon. Highs will be in the mid-50s. Wednesday, we'll have partly sunny skies and highs in the upper 40s. Thursday, mostly sunny skies and highs in the lower 50s. going to be a little bit breezy today in the Saginaw Valley. We could have wind gusts up to 28 miles per hour. We'll have partly cloudy skies and highs near 54. Tonight, the wind gusts continue with mostly cloudy skies and lows around 45. Tomorrow, expect rain in your morning commute and into the early afternoon. Highs near 60. Wednesday cools off. We'll have mostly cloudy skies and highs in the lower 40s. Thursday will be sunny with highs in the mid 40s. Welcome back to Michigan Mornings. I'm Matthew Handley. As we journey through this Holy Week, I want to share with you some thoughts on our Lord's Passion by the Church Fathers. This is from a sermon by St. Augustine. The Passion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the hope of glory and a lesson in patience. It is a great thing that we are promised by the Lord, but far greater is what has already been done for us and which we now commemorate. Where were the sinners? What were they when Christ died for them? 
When Christ has already given us the gift of his death, who is to doubt that he will give the saints the gift of his own life? Why does our human frailty hesitate to believe that mankind will one day live with God? Who is Christ if not the Word of God? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This Word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us. He had no power of himself to die for us. He had to take from us our mortal flesh. This is the way in which, though immortal, he was able to die. The way in which he chose to give life to mortal men. He would first share with us, and then enable us to share with him. Of ourselves we had no power to live, nor did he himself have the power to die. Accordingly, he effected a wonderful exchange with us through mutual sharing. We gave him the power to die, and he gave us the power to live. The death of the Lord, our God, should not be a cause of shame for us. Rather, it should be our greatest hope, our greatest glory. In taking upon himself the death that he found in us, he has most faithfully promised to give us life in him, such as we cannot have ourselves. He loved us so much that sinless himself, he suffered for us sinners, the punishment we deserved for our sins. How then can he fail to give us the reward we deserve for our righteousness, for he is the source of righteousness? How can he whose promises are true fail to reward the saints when he bore the punishment of sinners, though without sin himself? Brethren, let us then fearlessly acknowledge and even openly proclaim that Christ was crucified for us. Let us confess it, not in fear, but in joy not in shame, but in glory. The Apostle Paul saw Christ and extolled his claim to glory. He had many great and inspired things to say about Christ, but he did not say that he boasted in Christ's wonderful works, in creating the world, since he was God with the Father, or ruling the world, though he was also a man like us. Rather, St. Paul said, let me not boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, that's a sermon from St. Augustine. We'll have more thoughts from the Church Fathers all throughout this Holy Week here on Michigan Mornings. I'm Matthew Handley. Lord willing, I'll be back tomorrow. And until then, goodbye.